me so long. Look, everybody. Been good to me. Been good to me. You've been good to me. Been good to me. Better than. Been good to me. I've been to myself. Son of God. You've been good to me. Been good to me. Been good to me. Been good to me. You've been good to me. Been good to me. Been good to me. Been good to me.
Anybody a worshiper? Is anybody a worshiper? Bishop, Bishop, give me just, give me just a little bit more. I want to know, do we have some true worshipers in the house? Because see, it's just one thing to come to the building every week and do what everybody else does. But Monday through Friday, you've got to be a worshiper. You've got to be a house of prayer. It's got to be in your spirit that the God that you serve on today is the God that you serve throughout the week. Hey, 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 hey. Anybody want to be a house of prayer? Hey! 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 Lord, make me a house. Make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer.
Yes, I'd father. You sing, Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Anybody want to be closer to Jesus? Anybody want to see his face? Help, 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 help. that the Lord gave me in order to humble myself I say stay right there I'm running I'm running I'm running to the mercy seat I'm running you want to run I'm running I'm running I'm running to the I can't do it by myself I'm running has to mean it has to be of a sweet smelling aroma in the Lord's nostril said Lord make me a house make me a house of bread so I challenge you right now to talk to the Lord right now in your spirit tell him to show you everything Lord make me a house of prayer right now he's listening he's waiting he's doing all for us say oh, me a house. every request right now every request you possess the power to talk to the Lord in a one on one even right now even as we speak you possess the power to tread amongst scorpions you possess the power to move by his spirit. All you got to do is submit. A house of prayer. See, when you're out there on the expressway and somebody's gotten road rage, you can just sing in your spirit. Lord, make me a house. Want to be pleasing, Lord. Want to be pleasing in your sight, Lord. And all together, all together, let's say this. May the fire, may the fire of my altar never burn. May the fire of my altar never burn. May the fire of my altar never burn. Make me, make me a house of may, hey, may the fire of my altar never burn. May the fire of my altar never burn May the fire of my altar never burn Make me a house of everybody just to take a moment. If you got to close your eyes, man, get in a place with God. We're going to talk to God this morning. 
take just a few moments, and I want you to think about what it means to make me a house of prayer. God, make me a house of prayer. What does it mean? What does it mean to be a person that daily communes with God, a person that daily talks to the Father, a person that has a relationship with the Father? What does that mean for you? I don't know if anybody's ever been in a place where things were happening in your life and you didn't know which way to go because you didn't really know how to pray. You didn't really know what it really meant to pray or really have that relationship. But I do want you to know somebody that prays to the Father and has that relationship and talks with him every day, they're not easily moved by the winds and waves of life. They're not easily moved by the things that's happening in their life. The Bible even tells us they're planted like a tree by the rivers of water. How many of y'all want to be planted like a tree by the rivers of water? I won't be moved by the things that are happening in my life. I won't be moved because things are swaying one way or the other, but I'm going to stay the course because I have a relationship with the Father. God, make me a house of prayer. How many of y'all want that in your life? You want to be that house of prayer. You don't want to be moved so easily by the things that are happening in your world. You want to stay on course. You want to stay on track. You want to stay the course with who the Father is. Come on, how many of y'all, that's your prayer this morning? Somebody just needs to pray to the Father. God, I want to be a house of prayer. It said, may the fire on the altar never burn out. How do we keep that fire going? By communing with the Father. By having a relationship of not only prayer, but a relationship of worship. Now, y'all, we've been a little too quiet in here today, but I need just a few people in here with me today to raise your voices and give God some glory. Come on, you've been a little too quiet. You've been a little too calm. Somebody needs to let loose today and give the Father some glory. Come on, open your mouth and give him some praise. Come on, open your mouth and give him some praise. Get outside of yourself and give him glory. God, we love you, God. We worship you, God. We honor you, God. We declare that there is none like you, Father. No one like you, God. Hey, God, we bless you on today. We bless you on today. We bless you on today, Father. May the fire on the altar never burn out, God. May it never burn out, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you know God is looking for some people that are worship? That will worship him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for some people that's going to give him glory when things are going right and when things are going wrong. God is looking for some people that's going to give him glory no matter what. Is anybody in this house like that right now? Say, God, I'll praise you regardless of what's going on in my life. God, I'll give you glory regardless of what's happening in the world around me. God, things are going crazy in my life. Things are not right on my job. Things are not right with my friends. I'm losing family. But God, you're still worthy, God. You're still worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? Is that anybody's testimony this morning? Is your testimony is that God is still worthy? Is your testimony that he's still worthy? That regardless of what's happening around me, Father, you're still worthy. It may not have gone my way, but God, you're still worthy. It may not happen the way I thought it should happen, but God, you're still worthy. Come on, if that's your testimony, open your mouth and give him glory. God, you're still worthy. You're still worthy. You're still worthy. You're still worthy. Hey. You're still worthy. You're still worthy. Things may not have gone how you planned them. Things may not have worked out the way that you wanted it to work out. It may not look like what you think it should look like. But he's still worthy. He's still worthy. My father has a plan. And even though my plan sometimes doesn't line up with his plan. His plan works, and he's still worthy. He's still worthy. Ooh. He's still worthy. He's still worthy. God, you're still worthy. God, you're still worthy. 
still worthy. Y'all just take just a few more moments. Come on, everybody's eyes closed, man. Focus on the Father this morning. Just take just a few more moments and really examine yourself. Examine yourself. Are you a house of prayer? Come on, are you a house of prayer? Have you allowed the fire on your altar to burn out? Are you at a place right now where you're just tired, you're exhausted, you don't feel like you have anything else to give? Yeah. Come on, if you're in that place, this time is for you. This moment is for you. Don't miss this moment. The presence of our living Father is here. When you're at your last and you don't feel like you have anything else, when you're at your weakest point, you have to remember that his strength is made perfect. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Take just a few moments, man, and examine your relationship with the Father. That's what this is all about. It's not about who's next to you. It's not about anything else right now. It's about your relationship with the Father. Where are you? And I'm here to tell you right now, if your fire has burned out, if you're not a house of prayer, you still can be one. So God, it's our prayer this morning that you would ignite a fire on the inside of us this morning. Ignite a ever, ever, never ending fire inside of us this morning, God. Consume everything that's not like you. Burn it out right now in the name of Jesus, God. Ignite a fire inside of your people this morning. A fire that will never burn out inside of your people this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're asking for restoration on this morning. Come on, how many of y'all need to be restored? Come on. Now we're asking for restoration on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. If you ask God for your fire to not be burned out, if you ask God for, for him to restore that fire on the inside of you, y'all, before we move forward, before we make take a step forward anymore, I just need y'all one more time to lift your voices up. Come on, lift your voices up. Come on, come on, lift your voices up. Come on, praise him, praise him. Come on, let me hear you, praise him. Give him glory, come on, if he's worthy, praise him. If he's ever done anything for you, give him glory. Come on, if he's worthy of the glory, praise him. If he's worthy of the praise, praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, Lord. Well, y'all, welcome to Redeemed Empowerment Center. Hey, man, I'm excited about being in Redeemed this morning. We're excited about what God is doing and I've missed on today. Y'all, we're going we gonna, to we gonna keep this thing rolling. We want to um, go into our time of tithes and offering. Uh-uh-uh. All right, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me try it again. Let me try it again. Y'all, it's time to give. Come on, any, anybody excited about giving this morning? Hey, man, we're going to ask that you get your tithes and your offering together. Can anybody testify that you've been a consistent giver and you've seen God move like never before in your life? Anybody, anybody a consistent tither or a consistent sower? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got some consistent givers in this house. So as you get your tithes and your offering together. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand and uh, one of the ushers will pass one out to you. So you got a few ways you can give. You can give by Givelify. You can go on the app and give by Givelify. Also, if you need to give by debit or credit, Sister Sonya will be standing right over here for you, okay? You guys, right back there.
Family, we're going to ask if you would, please stand to your feet for me. Stand to your feet. Raise your seat in the air. If you're giving by Give Lafay, you can raise your phone if you need to. And let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God, just for the ability to give on this morning. God, we thank you, God, that we are a house full of cheerful givers, God. And we thank you, God, that you'll restore everything that we've already given to you, God. We love you. We honor you and praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. If y'all need to give, the guys with the buckets going to be coming down the aisles here. Man, anybody excited about hearing the word this morning? Come on, anybody excited about the word of the, our Father this morning? Hey, Amen. We're excited. Y'all, we do want to give an honor to our pastors who are out on today. Uh, pastors Mark and Tara Crawford. Come on, y'all, give it up for them. They need some relaxation, and we understand that. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, y'all, we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, everybody stand to your feet. We're going to honor our speaker on today. Come on, everybody give it up for Minister Amita. Oh, you're like, Minister Amita Salim. Amen. Minister. I'm going to call her Minister Butterroll. <laughs> How y'all doing? Let's lift up a word of prayer. God, we just thank you, God, for allowing us to just be used by you on this morning. We thank you, God, that we are your vessels on this morning. We thank you, God, that we have given you a for sure yes, and we are not looking back. We're not wavering on our decision. God, we're giving you glory all the way through. We ask you, God, to just use us on this morning. God, use me. The Holy Spirit, speak through me in a way that I can't even imagine. Allow me just to preach and teach your word like never before. God bless everyone in this atmosphere and even online just to take one thought, Lord Jesus, home to be able to meditate on a God, to give you the glory forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning I just want to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. I'll be coming from Luke chapter 8, the 31st through the 54th verse. If I could title this message this morning, it would be, How Bad Do You Want It? I feel like when the woman with the issue of blood, her story is just so amazing to me. I feel like it was so full of courage, so full of boldness. I feel like the woman with the issue of blood knew exactly what she wanted from God, and she didn't care who was standing in her, in her way to get it. If how bad do you want it was a person, it would be the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> um, this woman was a true example of how bad do you want it. Even when they talked about how um, the woman with the issue of blood went through the crowd and even to see Jesus, she knew Jesus was coming that day. She knew it was something that she had to receive from Jesus, and she didn't care how she was going to get it. She just knew, I got to get to Jesus. All right, in the 41st verse, I'm going to start with 40. It says, now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus 
came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. It says, as Jesus was on his way to the crowd, the crowd almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but not no one could heal her. It even talked about how she gave all of her money. She put all of her finances into all of these doctors and physicians, and no one still could come up with the answer on how to heal her. And it says, immediately as she touched the edge of his cloak, she stopped bleeding. And I want to just talk about even Jesus. We know how powerful Jesus was. He was going through the city, hitting the land, and even him going through the crowd, it says the, um, the crowd almost crushed him. So I could just want y'all to imagine how many people this woman had to get through. A crowd of many, if Jesus this powerful was almost crushed, what you think this woman with the issue of blood would have done? And also this woman with the issue of blood, it was against the law for this woman to even be out like this. She was unclean. Just imagine being on your cycle for all of these years. You got this all over where, and I can just even imagine the smell. So for her being able to go out in a, in a, crowd, of mil, uh, a crowd of many just to get to Jesus, it showed that she wanted healing so bad that she would rush through a crowd to get that healing. Her drive, her tenacity, her determination, her faith was bigger than the size of a mustard seed because she had to get to this healing. It shows that she talked about she had prayer. She was so bold. She was co so courageous, and she didn't even care about the law. She was going to break the law because she needed healing. So I just want to ask y'all, how bad do you want it? Are you willing to go to the extremes when it comes to get your healing? Are you willing to go to the extremes when it comes to get what you need from Jesus Christ? See, she had to think outside the box. All right, um, it's a crowd of men. I know many people is going to be out here, right? I know it's going to be so many people out here, and, and Jesus is probably going to be healing so many that he won't even be able to get to me. So how can I get to Jesus? This woman broke through a crowd of men, and she probably was putting stuff on everybody coming through this crowd. Do you hear me? But she knew she needed to get this healing from God. And she didn't curve. She went to God and bowed down before. All she knew is she needed to just touch the hem of his God. But do you know how big your faith have to be to know if I just touch his toe, if I just touch his arm, if I just touch the hem of his garment, how powerful that is, how big your faith is? And it was a crowd of many, and God knew, wait a minute, somebody touched me. And it wasn't the fact that he was going through crowds, because I'm sure plenty of people was brushing up against him. It was a crowd of many, but he felt the faith of this woman. He felt the power of this woman. He felt that this woman was at her last. He felt that this woman was so tired. She was so weak, but she knew she had to get to the hem of his garment. Do you know how much she was ostracized? She probably was talked about. She probably was mocked. She was probably full of shame because people probably talked about her so bad. Girl, don't go by her. She on her cycle. She smelling real bad. Listen, leave that lady alone, but she didn't care. She broke the law to get through all of this shame. She broke the law to get through all of the people that pointed fingers at her. She broke the law to get through all of these people that's mocked her because she knew she had to get to the hem of this garment. She got word that Jesus was coming to town and made up in her mind by any means necessary, even if it's against the law, she would get to the hem of his garment. I just want y'all to think about, about anything that you went through. And you knew you was at your last. You knew you didn't have nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to. You knew you didn't have nobody to help you. But all you knew, you just can say, Jesus. You could just call out Jesus. You couldn't muster up a prayer. You couldn't muster up a sentence. You couldn't muster up a paragraph. All you need to know is say Jesus. That's what the woman of the issue of blood meaning was. All she knew was Jesus. All she knew is she had to get to Jesus. She didn't care how she was going to get there. She didn't care who she was going to touch and who she was going to put, make dirty or unclean that day. All she knew she had to do was get to Jesus. And that made me think about my life and what I've been through. And how many times I've told God no. Even standing up here today, over this week, I was like, no, no, God, not again, not again, not again. And um, I can think back about four years ago when I told him I would never tell him no again. 
I was tired. I was at my last. I didn't have a dime. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. But all I knew is I needed Jesus. I didn't have a prayer. I didn't have a hope. I didn't know where it was going to come from. But all I knew, I needed Jesus. And I end up going to this conference one day. And again, I'm in a crowd of many. I mean, it was about a thousand people at this worship conference. And I'm the one that was always talked about. I'm the one that was always mocked. I'm the one that was always fingers pointed in. I'm the one that was full of shame. So I knew at this conference, wasn't nobody going to see me. Wasn't nobody going to hear me. Didn't nobody have a word for me. But out of a crowd of many, a man of God came up and told me, don't you ever tell God no again because he hears your no. Don't you ever tell God again because he got something better for you. Don't you ever tell God no again because he's going to take you to places you never dreamed of. Don't you ever tell God no again because he's going to lift you up in front of the people that pointed fingers at you, in front of the people that mocked you, in front of the people that shamed you your entire life. So that day forward, I was like, okay, God, I will never give you a no again. Even when we went out on bill, my whole goal is to reach the city of Memphis. When I was blessed with the prayer team, I was like, okay, yeah, I remember Pastor Henderson out here in this street with this prayer team. I know I got this. This is all I got to do, right? We can do some drive through prayer. And God was like, no, we're going to do more than it. I was like, I don't know, God. I ain't give him a no, Earl, but I was like, I don't know about the city of Memphis. I can stand in the driveway and talk to somebody and pray all day. So when Pastor Patrick and Andrea came and said we was going to Bill Street, I was like, man, we finna go to Bill. Do, do you know what I did on Bill? <laughs> you know how much I smoked and drank on Bill? Do you know how much many drugs and blunts that I sold on Bill? Do you know how many fights that I started on Bill? And I ain't been back to Bill since, and you telling me we finna go pray for some folks on Bill? And even that day, sitting in this church, we was almost over, and I was like, well, they ain't said nothing about going to Bill. I'm going home. Thank you, Jesus. And here come your pastor. Oh, well, we still going to Bill? I was like, man. She just had hey, always that one. It's always that one. She just had to say something. So I'm nervous all the way down here. I'm so nervous. I'm just praying. I'm like, God, you taking me back to a place I said I would never go back to, not knowing that I had to go back to pray for people. I just didn't want to go back in that scene because, you know, they say if you on crack, never go around a crackhead. They, they say if you promiscuous, never be around the folks that's promiscuous. So I was the one that was cutting up on bills, so why would I go back to this place? Even with my parking, uh, Jada and, uh, <laughs> and Marcus was laughing at me because I paid $15. But they had no idea. That was the same parking lot. I was just push through and get through for free. Do you hear me? I knew it was a $5 pay, but I'm like, I ain't finna pay. I'm finna push this up and y'all drive my car on through. You know, we used to sneak through that gate. So even me paying that $15 to go back through that same gate was God was showing me, look, you are not the same. You are not the same. You are not the same. So they gave me a little confidence. I'm like, okay, he did give me a little money to put in my pocket. Okay, I can go and pay for this parking. So even as we walking down through Bill, I was like, man, I'm still a little nervous. I'm sitting here with all of my sisters and brothers. You know, they ain't my color, but they still my sisters and brothers. So they really finna talk about me, right? And we standing in the crowd, and here come four gangsters. I knew these folk. I ran with their brothers, gangster disciples, and it was their little cousin. They was like, man, them folks finna come pray. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I was like, Lord, here we go. <laughs> we ain't even lay hands, prayed, and touched, and they already talking about, here come them praying folks. I was like, man, I'm finna get embarrassed. We in Memphis. These folks wanna talk about us. You know how Memphis folk check? Memphis folk check. I'm talking about, we'll check you out your shoes. I'm like, man, they sitting us right here. I'm like, why we ain't go on the side streets? You know, we're in the parking lot in the dog. Like, we on bill full of people. So as we were walking and we were praying, it was I was with Patrick, uh, Earl, and Drill, and I'm still in the back. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hang back. So if they still ain't finna get me, ain't nobody still finna see me. I'm going to hang in the back. So Patrick ended up walking up to this guy. He was sitting with some ladies, and he was by himself, though. 
and he started praying and just talking to him with a norm, normal conversation, and then he ended up asking Drea to play. I'm like, okay, thank you, Drea. I still ain't got to pray. God, you got me. Still had no idea God was still making a way for me to move in this man's life. And he was like, Mimi? I was like, I ain't told you my name, Mimi. Who done told it? <laughs> Pastor Pat, she was like, Mimi, come on, get this man a Jesus. I'm like, get this man a Jesus? What? Me? And I had no idea what I was going to say. All I knew was to say Jesus. That's all I could say. I was like, Jesus. And in that moment, God allowed me to say, if you love the Lord, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you know that he died on the cross for your sins, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you know that he arose on the third day, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And the man shook his head like, I was like, no, nah, I'm here now, God. I can't let up. Sir, I need you to speak with your mouth. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you knew that he died on the cross for your sin, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And he did it. He spoke it, and he said it. And Brother Patrick was like, you just saved a man from hell. I was like, what? I was like, me? <laughs> the one they talked about me? The one they pointed fingers at me. The one who used to fight, steal, rob me. So I was like, God, you could have just told me I want the same. You ain't have to take me through this whole step. But sometimes God got to move you out your way so you can be who he's called you to be. Sometimes it be our own self. Sometimes it be our own self in a way. Because I was the one who thought you had to be so holy, so prophetic, so anointed, coming to church, suited and booted every day, knowing every scripture and every prayer. It ain't even that money. Sometimes you can be in the lunchroom and in, in your work and your, co and your co-workers in the lunchroom or in the break room and you just give them a word. You can just tell them your story. You can just tell them how God deliver you. See, it don't take, a, it, you need to know the word. You need to love the word. You need to be fed the word. But it don't take every scripture knowing it by word for word to tell somebody about who Jesus Christ is. It's not about the scripture to tell somebody what God has brought you through. Because sometimes the person that's been fed that silver spoon ain't going to reach the one that's out there shooting and killing, robbing and stealing. So never say what God won't have you to do. Never be the one that say, hey, it ain't me because I've been through all this. I look this way and I've acted this way my whole life. It's not the one. God will choose anybody. And it just blessed me so to know that... <laughs> I wanted God so bad that I had to go through so many different steps in my life. Like, I wanted his love so bad that he had to take me down to my last dime. Like, I wanted his love so bad that he had to show me that no one is dirt in, in my life but him. Only him. Sometimes he'll put people in your life to say no so you can call on him. If my brother would have helped me for my whole life, <laughs> I wouldn't have never called Jesus. It took my brother telling me no when my children didn't have nowhere to go. So I could start all the way back over with God, my father. He took me back to a place I did not want to go. I didn't want to go back to my mama's house because I felt like I'd be starting over. But God needed me to start fresh. We didn't even know that he wanted us to start fresh so we can truly depend on him and only him. I needed him and only him. I didn't need my mama to save me. I didn't need my brother to save me. I didn't need my church to save me. I needed God to save me. I needed God to show up when I prayed that prayer and say, hey, Father, I ain't got no dime, and he placed that dime in my pocket. I needed to see that it came from him. So, church, I just want to ask you, how bad do you really want it? How bad do you want to be close to God? How bad do you want to be the person God has birthed you to be? How bad do you want to stand out in the crowd a minute and break through that crowd just to get to God? How bad do you want it? When you want it bad enough, you're going to have to drop some friends. When you want it bad enough, you're going to have to stop scrolling on Facebook. When you want it bad enough, you're going to have to fast 40 days and 40 nights. Not seven days, not from 6 to 12. I'm talking about a full 40 day and 40 nights if you want whatever you need from God. 
I was just reading. I was like, man, God fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Can't even do two weeks. I'm complaining for two weeks. And he was tempted every day by the devil. I'm talking about every day by the devil. And the only thing I'm tempted by is because my body said eat at 12 o'clock. What? How bad do you want it? Do you want it bad enough where you will go over and beyond by any means necessary to get to God? Do you want it bad enough if they tell you to stop praying today, will you still pray? Or would you go hide and run away? If you want it bad enough and the, the president said, hey, no more church, what you going to do? Can you worship at home? Can you praise them at home? Are you going to be able to love God on your own? How bad do you want it? I remember even in high school, I used to play so much. And uh, I'm going to close with this. And I knew my mama didn't play about my grades, but I played. I didn't, you know, I was just one of them children that just try to test her all the time. So I end up in the 12th grade. I felt English and I felt mad. So I'm like, man, mama, what you going to do? <laughs> like, mama, how you going to get me out of this? I'm like, you going to summer school. I'm like, summer school? Yeah, you got to go to summer school. Okay, okay, cool. You going to take me? Mom said, no, nah, I ain't taking you. You going to get there however you going to get there. I'm like, what? What you mean you ain't going to take me? I ain't got no car. I don't know how to drive. You going to get there how you going to get there. Catch your bus however. Now, I'm going to give you some bus for You going to learn how to get there. You going to figure out what bus to get on. You going to figure out what transfer you going to get. And this money I'm giving you, you going to figure out if you're going to use this for lunch or you going to use this for your bus fare. And I did that for two whole months, y'all. Let me tell you how bad I wanted my diploma. Let me tell you how bad I didn't want to be left behind. Let me tell you how bad I didn't want to start over in 98 with 12th grade with some young cats that saw me in the 12th grade the year before. Let me tell you how bad I wanted it. I caught that bus every day. I caught that bus every day. And when I would get up to the top of the street, I don't know who this lady is, but she would give me a dollar food stamp so I could go to the store and give me some lunch. And I didn't even have to figure out how to take this money my mama gave me and break it down from transfer to transfer, a bus fare, and lunch. When I tell you when you want it bad enough, God will put people in your way to show up. He will put people in place to show up. And when he can't reach you, he will put people in place to show up. You just gotta tell bad, you just gotta tell God how bad you want it. If it's healing in your life, I need you to stand up and tell God how bad you want it. If it's a finances in your career or a new job, I need you to tell God how bad you want it. Even if it's a husband or a wife, I need you to tell God how bad you want it. Because trust and believe, I done told God how bad I want it. And he ain't never left my side. Through it all, he's been right there. Through it all, he's been right there. Through it all, God has been right there. But he had to take me from a place where I felt like I had to go to the public for help. He wanted me to trust only in him. God said, I ain't going to do nothing for you until you show me how bad you need me. Until you show me how much you love me. Until you show me who is your father in your life. Until you show me what you need from me. nothing about like living, looking at your life, knowing what you went through, and then seeing the rainbow at the end. <laughs> Even when I struggled, I saw the end game. Even when I struggled, I saw the end game. I had no idea I was going to be selling butter rolls around Memphis. I had no idea I could make an income off of something I saw my mama doing in her kitchen. But it took that one taste from one person. It took that one taste for everybody to say, man, this girl butter roll so fine, man. This girl butter roll so fine, man. Y'all got to get this girl butter roll right here. And when I tell you, every morning I wake up, I got an order. <laughs> every night I go to bed, I got an order. It took God to show me who I am truly as his daughter. I had no idea 
still he was my father. But it took him to say, daughter, how bad do you want it? If this is your career, if this is your business, how bad do you want it? So God, we just want to give you the glory on today. God, we just want to give you all the glory today. God, I thank you that we are in a house of people that say they want you bad enough that they will go to the depths for you, Lord Jesus. They will go to the depths for you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you shame no longer lives in this house. God, I thank you regret no longer lives in this house. God, I thank you condemnation no more lives in this house. God, for you we will. God, we give you a for sure yes. And even if it was shaky on yesterday, God, on today we give you a for sure yes. Because we know who you are. You are El Shalim. You are Elohim. You are El Shaddai. You are the bright and morning star. You are the beginning and the end. You are the author and the finisher. You are the great I am. You are Yahweh. God, you are Yahweh. God, you are Yahweh. And God, on today we say yes to your will, yes to your way. God, we don't know how you're going to get us there, but we trust in you to get us there. God, we don't know how we're going to buy, but we know you're going to provide. God, we don't know what healing is going to come, but we seek you for that healing. God, we've been through so many addictions, but we thank you that you are going to break them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So, God, on today we trust in your word. We love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, touch our lives in a way that's so pleasing, Lord Jesus. Because at the end, God, we want to stand before you and we want you to say, servant, well done. So tomorrow when we go to work, we ain't going to bypass that angry co-worker. We're going to tell them how good God has been. Tomorrow we ain't going to bypass that family member that talked about us. We're going to tell them how good God has been. Because we got to stand before you in judgment day and we want you to say, servant, well done. God, we thank you for the transformation of our lives. There is none like you and we put no other God before you. God, on today we say yes, Lord. God, we say yes, Lord. God, we say yes to your will, God. And God, if we forever forget who you are, just whisper to us, how bad do you want it? And we will show up and show out for you like never before. We praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. We pray, man. ask yourself, she asked us a question, how bad do you want it? And that's a, um, that's a question we probably definitely, definitely, definitely need to answer. But y'all, at this time, we just want to open up the altar. If you're seeking God for anything and you you told yourself in your mind, God, I, I need this this bad or whatever the case may be. We want to open up the altar just to come pray with you this morning. Whatever's on your mind, whatever, whatever's on your heart this morning, if you need prayer, come on down. And ask yourself, how bad do you want it? If you're needing something from the living God this morning, we're asking that you come down. Let us pray with you. Let us pray with you this morning. Here's what I need to do. Make sure, make sure you're standing to your feet. Don't even be looking at me at this moment. Just close your eyes and talk to the Father. Talk to the Father this morning. Let's take a few moments. Let's just take a few moments. Take a few moments. If you're seeking God for anything in your life right now, like I said, we just want to pray with you this morning. We want to agree with you and we want to pray with you. If there's anybody in this house right now that does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to invite you to come on down for salvation. Somebody in here seeking God for something. 
There's somebody in here seeking God for something. Something may be telling you right now, you don't need to go down for prayer. You don't need what they're telling you you need. But if God is urging you to come down, if you feel it inside your spirit, he's telling you to come down for prayer. We're just asking that you come down this morning. We just want to agree with you. Hallelujah. you have some things that you've been struggling with for a while, some things in your life. It could be financial, it could be emotional, just some different struggles in your life right now. Like I said, we just want to pray with you this morning. There's some things you're dealing with in your life right now that you really don't have to. Um, that some of them can come out just by prayer, can come out through deliverance. And like I said, we just want to open the altar up for you this morning. If you've been dealing with some of these struggles in your life and in your mind, struggles in your home, different things. Like We just want to open it up for prayer. We just want to open it up uh, for you to get the freedom that you need this morning. Come on, if you're feeling bound, if you're feeling bound, if you're feeling like something has a hold of you and you can't get free, we just want to help you pray for freedom this morning. Something I used to hear a lot is don't let the enemy cheat you. And that's for real, don't let the enemy cheat you.
Amen, amen. All right, y'all, we about to get out of here. I know y'all ready to go get your uh, barbecue and your ribs and folks having fish fries and all that good stuff. Amita, Amita. Come on right here. Y'all, we about to get out of here. Thank y'all so much for uh, worshiping with us today. Anybody enjoy that word? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So we'll get Miss Amita to close us out. Y'all, are we getting out? Our heads. Lord, we just want to give you all the honor because you deserve it. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for every place that you've taken us from. And we thank you, God, for every place you're taking us to. God, I ask that you, we ju you just cover us and keep us safe each and every day. Lord, as I plead the blood of Jesus, as I plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, we just trust in you to show up in our lives like never before, to protect us, to heal us, to give us your comfort, to give us your grace and mercy, to give us your joy, your peace. God, we just want all of you. God, we stand before you on today with our arms outstretched, saying, "Jesus, we need you." We can't live without you. We don't want to live without you. We don't want to know what it feels like not to have you as our Father and Savior. God, we give you all the glory. God, bless each and every person, God, that's here today just to make it safely to their destinations. Even over this holiday weekend, God, we plead the blood of Jesus that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We will have a good time in you. God, we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.